Muhammad is the way to the Father, Jesus is the way to God, Moses is the way to God. But notice, he's not a mediator in the sense of... No man comes to the Father. He's not saying I'm like Moses. Also, Muhammad, I mean, you believe he's a messenger in the line of prophets like Moses, etc. He actually did contradict Moses. Uh, in, in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 1, it says you should not have any sacred stones. Why Jesus, if he'd gone around making these amazing statements about himself, I am this, I am that, uh, in public, why would no other historical source in the first century know about this? So you're disputing that Jesus gives eternal life. Is that the bottom line? No, it's not. I'm talking about this passage. But that's what our so, question was earlier. Well, yeah. That was about three years ago. Exactly. Or four years ago. And it still hasn't ago. come to fruition in you. <laughs> you still have it. Who wrote the Quran, by the way? Yeah, that's a good question. Who wrote the Quran? Because we don't know the guy's name, the WhatsApp, the uh, Instagram page. We just don't know who wrote it. We've got scrapbooks <laughs> of both. <laughs> denies that he is God by pointing to someone else as the only true God. But you would say, no, 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 Jesus, you're wrong, Jesus. You would say Jesus was wrong. Oh, no, no, Jesus, you should have said, I am God, worship me. But no, Jesus said, you are the only true God, addressing God himself. That refutes your religion. You don't follow Jesus, you follow a man-made religion made up by the church. Can we reply now? You follow the church, not Jesus. Can we answer now? Can we answer? Can we answer? I just did. Okay. Why did Jesus point to, to God and say, you are the you only finish. true God? No, I haven't, thank you. You are the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. If he was God, he wouldn't say, you God are the only true God. He would say, I am the only true God. Or we are the only true God. Okay, let's, let, let's read that, that what he's quoting. What Jesus said, and he says, only you true God. And Jesus, in adding himself as a Messiah, as, no, as, as, a Messiah. as yes. he said, as a Messiah. and Jesus, he said, you whom are you have the Son sent, of God. And he said, you have sister, Sorry, he just he added, he Jesus added himself. Paul, Paul, listen, I'm answering you. I'm answering you. In the same, in the same passage, verse that you quoted, Jesus said, "You only the true God, and." And Jesus, whom, whom you sent. Exactly. So come on. You have God, God is a separate being. The Jesus, Jesus. No, there's God plus Let man. me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. So the true God is the Father and you might Jesus. Have something. I don't need to shout, by the way. I'm not dead. Yeah. No, you're not saying anything. You're just repeating uh, like a parrot the same thing over and over again. Do you want to say something? Tell yeah. us. When, when you yeah. start, when you, when you start there, maybe verse, you listen to the more brother. Is he saying something? Well, when, when you start there in verse three, you mustn't start in verse three. You must. Yeah, sorry. Ready? You mustn't start in verse three. You should only start in verse one. Verse one and verses one and two, Jesus says. Uh, he calls God his own father, yeah. and he calls himself God's son, yeah. which according to Islamic theology, Allah has no children, he has no sons, etc, etc. Then verse 3, oh, sorry, uh, one, one, one second, his theology. No, according to Islamic theology, oh, Allah, ha Allah has no son. Well, that's true. So yeah, in verses 1 and 2, Jesus calls himself his God's son, and he calls God his own father. And then verse 3, you're right, he says, and uh, this is eternal life, they may know you the true God, in comparison to false gods. And, 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 and Jesus Christ, Christ so he's, 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 one second. Right, but then verse, verse 5, he then goes on to say, Now, O Father, glorify me with that glory that I had with you before the world began. And if, I, I say this, Paul, if he was just a prophet, he couldn't share glory with the Father yeah, before the world began. Because, because, because the old, we, we know that the Old Testament says that God will share his glory with no one, but here we have Jesus sharing glory with the Father. And, and with the disciples too. Sorry? And with the disciples too. Yeah, yeah. not in the same sense he shares glory with the Father. Hang on, he, he, he shares the glory with everyone. Says, he says, that, he, says to the, he says to the disciples, you may be one of me and my father one. And what he's referring to there is that though he wants them to be one, in the sense him and his father one, him and his father are one in being in person, uh, excuse me, in being, in, in, in mission, they are one, in, they're one uh, and they are united. He wants the disciples to be as united as him and his father are united. Yeah. My point about the sonship thing is that the Quran is talking about God doesn't... I just wanted to pick up verse one. 
not on birth as well, so. God doesn't have children uh, in, in God. He, he is God. He's, un, he's not an animal. He's not like a, 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 like us who has babies. The sonship spoken of in the Bible is a metaphorical, poetic sonship. For example, Israel is called the son of God. No one actually thinks that Israel is the eternal uh, son of God in a divine sense. Uh, Adam is called the son of God in Luke chapter 3. No one, I hope, thinks that Adam, Adam is a divine being. Jesus called a son of God. Yes. He also says, blessed are the peacemakers, for you shall all be called sons and daughters of God. So I think we're dealing with different understandings of the term, both in the Quran, uh, which is making a different point about God not being like a human, like a, a, an animal that has babies, or, uh, sons or daughters. The, uh, in the Jewish sense, son of God means, uh, it's a metaphor, it means a righteous person, in the example of Adam, or it can mean uh, the chosen people like Israel. So I think your point doesn't really stand. Uh, coming back to the glory bit, well, I know it says God will not share his glory with anyone, but according to you, he shared it with Jesus. And according to Jesus, he shared, hang on, he shared it with other people as well. So that the Bible is not always, being a library of books is not always consistent. Sometimes it says contradictory things. But finally, don't take away from the really important point here. Jesus, uh, and this is an Islamic statement what Jesus made, this is eternal life. And I think any Muslim down here would agree with it. This is eternal life. And he's preaching, he's, sorry, he's praying directly to God, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. So, of course, Muslims must believe that uh, the toilet is just over there. Um, you're very funny. Uh, um, that's why I said you're very funny. Just you. preempting. Uh, sorry. Uh, so the point here is, if Jesus was a, if God was Trinitarian, if God was Trinitarian, then um, Jesus wouldn't talk like that. He would, he would say, we, we, or us, or something. He never talks like that in John. So I, I think you're shoehorning uh, Jesus' statement in John to fit your theology. No, I would say you, the point you made, which of you is going to be It's been personally made. Half-truth! Half-truth! I think the first point you made about there's many sons in the Bible. Yes. Well, you have to bear in mind that who does... God, God calls Jesus his own son. At that baptism in Mark, God, you have the Holy Spirit descending upon Jesus. You have God the Father saying, this is my son with whom I will please. Jesus is the only one who God calls directly his own son in the sense he's saying at the baptism. You can say we are children of God, I'm a son of God, but not in the sense that God called Jesus his own son. So I'd say there's a difference there in, in, in how you... How do you make a difference? I don't see a difference. Cloud well, it's the difference between a thee and an eye. The cloud radar. The other thing is, in, oh, in the Greek, in the Greek, there's not a difference in the DNA. That's not my point though. Okay. My okay. point is that, for, but that is the eternal life for them to know you, the one true God. Yeah. But you Half cannot truth. know the Father without the Son of Christianity here. speaking. Half truth! You can only by the power of... By the, Half truth! He's not speaking at the moment. <laughs> The, would, you mind, the, would you mind telling him? If he I'm told the complete lie, the you would know. Of the spirit, you can know. If he told you that Christ Muhammad was a child molester, so you would know. If he told you that Islam says that, you would know. I think it's the difference. We don't believe in Allah in the last day. Between the of knowing the one true God through Christ the mediator, which is scripturally sound. So I think Christ, by adding himself in there, is saying that you can know eternal life with the Father by in the way that he says, I am the truth, and there is no way to the Father. He doesn't see God, he says, the Father. So, in that most high, close up extreme. Very extreme. Get my best side. Just to come back to the mediator issue, uh, if you look, say, on the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus teaches his disciples how to pray, to say to him, How do we pray? He gives him a prayer, the Lord's Prayer, which is directly addressing God, God not Jesus. Uh, it doesn't say in Jesus' name in the passage. Uh, no. Hang on, you need to say it. Matthew, not in Matthew chapter uh, 5, or 6 and 7, Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew chapter 6, it's Sermon on the Mount, uh, uh, and the, the Lord's Prayer. And Jesus is telling him to pray directly to God. Uh, he never says pray either in my name or um, through me. He doesn't present himself as a mediator. He says just, in fact, the Trinity is not mentioned in the Lord's Prayer. The Son is not mentioned in the Lord's Prayer. The Holy Spirit is not mentioned in the Lord's Prayer. Or if you're Catholic, neither is Mary. But I know you're not Catholic. You're a good Baptist plan. 
so, Jesus Christ uh, Jesus' own spirituality, his own prayer life that he taught to his followers Repentance was very Islamic in that in he did not go through the Christian idea of a mediator. Like Paul says, it says, there, there is a, he says, I am the only way to the Nothing Father. The Therefore, yeah. the implication the is mediating. Or not even mediating. He will judge. To propagate. The Christ will judge by the Bible. Ask him about you, you really really me. I don't What know. have I ever done God. to this man? There is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. That's the quote. I was about to say that Jesus didn't... So it does mention mediation. No, no, no. Ask him about the whole truth. I'll find it. Sorry, I couldn't hear because I was... Hang on, one thing. No, I'll find it. It's difficult enough for me to hear what she's saying, let alone do with GPS. Ask him if I sit. Sorry, what's happening to you? I'm just finding out. I couldn't hear you. Ask him for the whole truth. Uh, it's Timothy two, 1 Timothy 2 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. I, I, thought, I thought that was um, indeed. Now, notice, of course, that passage is not Jesus speaking. It's someone else. In fact, most, most scholars now, I happen to agree with them, think that 1 and 2 Timothy and Titus is a forgery. It's actually not by Paul. Most scholars are Christians, by the way. Most scholars aren't Christians. Can you name five scholars? I don't one scholar, I can. Mark Ehrman. Right, well, he's the exception. Ah, okay, so I'm right. I said most. <laughs> I said most. No, well, let's, let's talk about the top who they are. Now let's talk about what they no, what they're Tom, Tom Wright, Jimmy Dunn. No, I'm just going through the, the, the top scholars here. Most of them, I didn't say all, most scholars, there are exceptions like uh, Bart Ehrman and one or two others. The vast majority of people engaged in New Testament studies at universities happen to be motivated by their Christian faith. Of course they would be. That sort of makes a lot of sense. But most Christian, most scholars do not think that Paul wrote this. No, it's it's anyway, Timothy. Uh, because um, Jesus didn't say it. If we look at Jesus, not Paul. He doesn't want to hear that. Paul, Paul didn't write the, uh, the, the letters one and two Timothy. Right. And Titus, according to most scholars, because the language the vocabulary is very different. It assumes a. Uh, 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 place in history is much later. It doesn't talk like Paul. His doctrines are quite different from Paul's doctrines in Corinthians and the authentic letters. But coming back to Jesus and not Paul, again, they're not the same thing. I am the way to the Father. Yeah, but he is, he is in the sense that Muhammad is the way to the Father, Jesus is the way to God, Moses is the way to God. But notice, he's not a mediator in the sense of... No man comes to the Father. He's not saying I'm like Moses. Can we come back to the Lord's Prayer? Because this is the paradigmatic prayer that the disciples have been taught by Jesus. All Christians are expected to, to learn from this prayer. The prayer does not include any reference to Jesus. It says no mediator. It's directly to God. It's a very Islamic prayer. But Christ says whatever you ask for in my name, you will receive. So he's saying if you invoke me, if you ask in my name. But who you are, who is, who is, who are we supposed to ask? The Father. God. What is that sign? No, did you deny the Father's God? No, Who's he's not the only God. So Christ is God and the Spirit is, 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 is God. God. So, so Jesus says, ask God. He doesn't say, ask Jesus. If Jesus was God, he'd say, ask me. But you don't ask God, you don't ask Jesus himself. Uh, a, a couple of things you made. You said that the Lord's prayer. Yeah, but yeah, it's about prayer, but some of things. Jesus called God his Father, called himself God's Son. No Muslim prophet could say that, all due respect. So Jesus said something that would go against Islamic prayer. What, what, what else Jesus did was, that, um, Jesus said, if you pray in my name, now no Muslim prays in the name of a prophet, but Jesus commands us to pray in his name. Yeah, there is, there is a difference there. Secondly, I agree with you. There's a difference. Yeah, of course there is. So, so to use Jesus' uh, example as a prayer, as a Muslim prayer, it doesn't quite, it doesn't quite work. One second, because he commands us, he can't, he commands us to pray, he commands us to pray in His name. He calls God His Father, He tells God's Son. That could go hand in hand with the prayer. Secondly. Jesus clearly makes the claims that he is God. I mean, would you agree that only God can give someone the eternal life? We both agree that, yes? Yeah, of course. Of course. So here we have Jesus saying in John 20, 28. It's in John 10, 28. And I give eternal life to them, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. So here we have Jesus there saying that he is the one who gives us eternal life. So we have to pray in his name, He's the one that gives us eternal life. I think both those things point to his deity. Perfect. I respond to that. First, coming back to the Lord's Prayer, the Lord's Prayer, remember, is the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. It's not addressed to Jesus. It's not addressed to the Holy Spirit. It's not addressed to the Trinity. It's addressed to the Father who is God in heaven. 
Now the word father, you're right, the, the, in Islam we don't address God as father and, and I think that uh, there are good reasons why we shouldn't because, because the way the word father and son have been changed over time by Christians there used to be a used to be a metaphor. We didn't literally believe that Bob was an old man in the sky with a beard. Although if you go into Sistine Chapel, that's what you'll see. We didn't literally originally believe that the sun was literally a, a metaphysical being with divine powers. That's not what the term son of God means in Judaism. It means Adam is called son of God. Israel is called son of God. Lots of people are called son of God. But uh, once, once the religion of Christianity, as it became, moved from its Jewish context in Palestine in the first century, when it moved into the Gentile Roman world, and it was completely engulfed by Gentiles, there were very few of any Jews left by the second century. By the third century, if you were a Jew, you were a heretic. When it moved into this area, suddenly uh, Jesus became a uh, like the pagan cult, a, a saviour god, uh, where the son of God meant a divine divine being, no. like a Council of Nicaea, no. whereas originally it didn't mean that. So there's been a, 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 a corruption of the original pure religion of Jesus. Coming back to the fatherhood, I think it's a very interesting point about the fatherhood. Uh, tickets, tickets, please. Um, the word father, because it's become corrupted, is not used. But the concept is there. So what is it to be a father? A father is someone who provides, who protects, who nourishes, who supports, who brings into existence. All of these terms are actually found in the attributes of God, the names of God, in the 99 names of Allah in Islam. So the word Rab, for example, R-A-B-B, uh, sometimes translated Lord, if you look at the Arabic, it has the sense of being a provider, a protector, a nourisher, a carer. All of these are fatherly attributes. So even though the, the contaminated language, in our view, of the Trinity has meant we can't use the language of father anymore because Christians have corrupted it, we still have the concept of fatherhood in as much as someone is a carer, a provider, a nourisher, a protector and so on. It's all there and, and someone who loves, who loves and so on. So I think Jesus, uh, Jesus was preaching Islamically. He used language before it was corrupted by the church, uh, and he wasn't the first to use that. The, the idea of Father of God's found in the Old Testament, it's found in Isaiah, for example. It wasn't a new idea, uh, calling people, calling God Father. But Islam being the final religion of God, the final statement to all mankind, it doesn't use language as being corrupted, although the underlying essence is the same, I would argue. You would like to say something. address the question. Oh, sorry, which question? So the question is, you... I thought I addressed them all. No, no, you, well, ones that weren't even asked. You, um, okay, so you cited, um, eternal life is to know you, oh, yeah, you eternal life, and then he quoted John, which was eternal life given by the Son. Right, okay. Very good point. So that, that's, that's the key. That's the key point. Point. Yeah, there's a good point. If you're going to use John 17 3 to make the point, bearing in mind when the original. When, when, in, in, in the manuscript. In Jesus' name. In, in, when, when those. Oh, I, am this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Before Abraham yeah. was, I so am. When they was, I am the resurrection and the life. So when there was originally. When, when the writings were penned down at the beginning, there was no chapter. There was no chapter marks or verses that was added in later to make it easier for us to navigate our Bible. So it, you can't. So, so you can't. Don't, don't allow me to interrupt. Don't so, 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 we mustn't, so, 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 so we mustn't separate. Chapter 17 from chapter 10. It's a continuous flow. So when you, so when you have, sorry. So when you have uh, John in, in John 10 saying that Jesus gives eternal life. Yep. Then you have John 17, 3. In the context of the whole letter, John has a very high Christology. Without a shadow of a doubt, John believes Jesus is God. So would you answer the point that we've just made? An excellent point, and now I'm going to change gears slightly, as you as you made up a good point. Okay. I think you might know the answer already. If, if, you are, if you're new to the New Testament, or you're new, obviously, but if someone is new and you start reading Matthew's Gospel, you read Mark's Gospel, you read Luke's Gospel, the first three Gospels in the New Testament, you, you're, they seem pretty much telling the same story in the same way. They're, they're pretty much, they feel the same the way that Jesus speaks is pretty much the synoptic Gospels, as they're called. You can see them in one view, they have a similar kind of outlook. When you come to John's Gospel, the last Gospel to be written, uh, people very often notice this. It feels like a different world. 
Jesus speaks very differently. He says things he doesn't say before in, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. He says these amazing things like, I am the Father of one. Before Abraham was, I am. I am the way, the truth, the life. I am the resurrection. I am the bread of life, etc., etc. I am the door. Will that be so? So he comes at these amazing I am statements. You're now head cameraman. Change of cameraman. Hang on, you're 17, aren't you? This is illegal. Oh, anyway. No, it's really um, not. <laughs> it depends what you want to do, but let's not go there. Let's, let's anyway. check with John. Anyway, so uh, this is something that you notice if you go from the uh, the earlier Gospels to John. John has Jesus uh, say things which are not found anywhere else. They're not found. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Funnily enough, Luke, who says we have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, forgets to mention this. Funnily enough, Matthew, who apparently is an eyewitness to Jesus' ministry, never mentions this. Oddly, Mark, who allegedly Peter's, you know, spokesman, if you like, never has Jesus say this. But Jesus said these amazing things in public, allegedly. I am this, I am that, I am, I am the other. Now, this tells us that historically, and this is a conclusion of virtually all scholars in the world, by the way, whether it be at Oxford or Cambridge or Yale or Harvard, anywhere you go, you'll get the reach the same conclusion. Historically, it's impossible to understand how Jesus, if he went around Galilee saying these amazing self-attesting, amazing self-referential statements, I am the light of the world, that no one bothered to write it down. A pop John. So are you uh, John, saying John's lying? Let, let me, is that your what I'm, what I'm saying is that John, that uh, he's not like, we, 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 we don't know John's intent. We don't even know who wrote John's gospel. I know you think John wrote it, but it doesn't actually say. You don't know what I think. I beg your pardon. Right. But th th likewise, good point, you don't know who John, what he thought. Because he I know what the, to, kids, the group thought about this but disciple who wrote this. The gospel itself things. doesn't say, I am uh, John and I am I wish. It doesn't say that. Um, so the conclusion is this. Either we have to believe that for some impossible reason, no one knew Jesus went around in public saying these stuff. Luke didn't. Mark didn't, Paul didn't, Acts never has any of them, or maybe John, John or John made this stuff up okay. and he invented these sayings. This includes <coughs> all historians that I've read, including Christian ones like Jimmy, <laughs> Jimmy Dunn and so on. They believe it because it doesn't make any sense historically. So my answer to your question is a bit more convoluted, is that the, uh, the amazingly high statements we find in John are only M found in John and they are not found in any other any of our sources. If Jesus said this, we would know from our other historical sources, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Paul, Acts, Q, M, L, to get technical for a second, none of our other sources has Jesus ever speaking like that. Therefore, historians conclude that this very late gospel made it up. And I agree. Thank you. So I, I would say that the, the, the narrative you're trying to make is that the Jesus we see in Mark is very different to the Jesus we see in John. Is that what I'm having you right there? John is an anomaly. Okay, let, let, let me just go. Let, let me reframe because you have asked me a question. I'm not saying it's completely different. I'm saying that the, the really high statements that John made, I am the way the truth is, okay, are not found in Mark. Okay. Now, of course, in John, Jesus says he's the Messiah, and Jesus says in Mark as well. Okay, so I would say that in, when you read Mark's gospel, I think Mark does have a, quite a high Christology. For example, in chapter 1, you see John, you see Mark having a quote in Isaiah chapter 14. And what he does there is, he, he quotes Isaiah 40, which says, there will be a messenger in the wilderness preparing the way for the Lord. And in Isaiah 40, it says the Lord God. So you have a messenger in the wilderness preparing the way for the Lord God. In Mark chapter 1, Mark clearly shows here that John the Baptist is the messenger preaching out in the wilderness, preparing the way for the Lord. Then you have Jesus coming as the Lord. So I'd say Mark is clearly pointing there that John the Baptist is this messenger in the wilderness, preparing the way for the Lord God, which is Jesus. And secondly, to make your point about John, you say that you don't know who wrote John. There, there is some early uh, historical evidence that, that, that says that John wrote John. In, in Arenaeus' writings, um, Arenaeus is important. Arenaeus was a disciple of Polycarp. Polycarp was a disciple of John himself. Arenaeus says in his writings that John wrote the Gospel of John. And Arenaeus is very close to John because he was discipled by the man who so was discipled Arenaeus by John. Arenaeus says a date? Do you have a date? So, no, it's, it's in his book against heresies. I, I do have a date. I was wondering what if you knew about it. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a good one and a half centuries later that he claimed that. He was, he's not a contemporary. Ages. Ages. Well, it is. If he, but, 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 the, but, the but the important part here, if he is a disciple of Polycarp... He's not a contemporary, that's what I mean. If he's a disciple of Polycarp... If he's a disciple of Polycarp... Like a narration. And Polycarp was taught by John, it's clear to not see this, that 
Polycarp would have passed this information down to Irenaeus who recorded it in his writings. No, no, that, that is a guess. That's not evidence. No, it, it, well, it's guess. the student right. of a... It could be right, but it's not evidence. But coming back, if Jesus went around, just to counterpoint that, if Jesus went around uh, saying these uh, amazing self-attestations publicly, I am the way, the truth, my life. My Abraham was, I am. Are you saying this publicly? And Luke, in the beginning of his gospel, says, Dear Theophilus, I've investigated everything carefully from the beginning, and I'm giving you an accurate account of what Jesus said and did. Oh, and he completely forgot to mention this? Well, the most amazing so thing, it's, it's so he completely to forgot. To it's uh, or, or maybe he just didn't know. Maybe, in fact, Jesus didn't say this stuff. It's unfair to say, because John doesn't mention it, excuse me, it's unfair to say because Mark, Matthew or Mark or Luke doesn't mention this, it didn't happen. We have four different people giving accounts of the same thing. If we all see something, let's say we see a car accident down the road. We all come and, and let, let, Let's say, I say in my account, that I heard the brakes screech, I heard the woman scream, then bang. And then, Car and then Kay says that I heard a woman scream and then breaks and then bang. It's the exact same message said in a different order, but it still happened. Just because there's differences slightly, it's, it's, it doesn't, it's not right to say, therefore nothing happens. But say I said, no, but, but say, but say I said, okay, let's go with that analogy. Okay, we, 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 we had, no, let's go with that analogy. So it's a car crash and so on. I had, the, this chap here says, an alien spaceship came down to, uh, and kidnapped someone and went up to heaven again. Now, so we all three agree, I don't know, it was a car crash. He says it was some alien from heaven that came down to earth and, and, and did his stuff. Now, are you going to say just three different... I mean, are you going to believe this guy? And then <laughs> oh, really? But you see how different the accounts are. In John's Gospel, Jesus comes from heaven, unlike in Matthew, Mark and Luke. He says stuff that no one else has ever heard him say in, Ma in, in Matthew, Mark and Luke, or Paul, or Acts, or anywhere else. And you're supposed to say it's just like seeing a car crash. But it's like him seeing an alien ship coming down from, from Mars. So what and it's just the same. It's not the same. You can't say they're all just a different perspective. Because you have not seen a spaceship, have you? You've not seen so a spaceship. So what about... You don't know that. No, you so what about... So, you so what about know. if a complete... It's a story. It's not okay, meant to be taken literally. So what if a new gospel comes along, for example, maybe 600 years later, yeah. and ascribes words to Christ that weren't in Matthew, Mark, Luke or John? Then we could use Paul's argument to say, how did anyone miss this? How, um, you know, how could he have spoken from the cradle and absolutely no one, including Mary, heard him? Yeah. At the end of John's Gospel, even in John, it says, oh, don't Even in John, I'm endorsing John here. I'm Go giving you Quran. something. Even in John, it says Jesus did many other things. So they ought to be written down. The books and of the world Luke can just contain it. Them. Now, it just so happens that God revealed his father Reve final revelation, which was revealed to him uh, 600 years later, the, the exact truth of what did and didn't happen to Jesus, <laughs> including some of those stories that even Luke, even John says were not written down. The but God, the John God who you don't trust. So, so even the fact that it's not in the Gospels does not mean no, you don't trust John. Do you not, do you not, do you not see why we have coming back to John? Yeah, sorry, but do you not see why we have an issue with Muhammad's revelation? Because imagine if somebody, imagine if, imagine if somebody, the law and the prophets, and then Christ. Imagine if somebody said, yeah, in Luke, Luke chapter 16, the law and the prophets were until John. But going to my point, if if somebody from France come along a thousand years after Muhammad, yeah, let's just say if somebody from France come along a thousand years after. Where did France come into this? No, it, it, it's, it's a valid point. Imagine. If somebody comes along in France a thousand years later and says, oh, I am the final messenger of God, and Muhammad wasn't the final messenger, all that stuff he said, ignore that, didn't, final, it, it never happened. Final. I am the final messenger. Do you not see why we, why, why, I mean, you would, no, you, 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 would, you would reject that. And all I'm saying actually, is, no, wait, no, wait, no, I actually, so I actually believe, I actually oh, believe it to be true, because the Quran claims, and I think with some justification, not to be giving a new message. What it's saying is over and over again, it's repeating and confirming the original revelation Revelation given to Jesus, Moses, etc. Now, when, 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 when I look at this historically, when I look at the little knowledge I have and what little uh, uh, knowledge I've gained from studying this academically, I see what the Quran's getting at. Because if you, if for example, what's the what's, what's the uh, the most important single, the, the top message in the Quran? They keep on repeating it. Tawhid. Tawhid. Muhammad is just a warner. He has no signs. No, 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 no. no it's, it's nothing to do. Nothing to do with Muhammad. Muhammad gets mentioned about four times in the Quran. No way. Coming back to the Tawhid, you're absolutely right. But the idea of the oneness of God. 
Jesus was asked, according to Mark's Gospel, what is the most important commandment? Jesus was asked, according to your own Gospel, and what did he say? Yeah, Lord, Lord God. No, he said, he who is the Shema. Oh, hear Israel, Lord your God, Lord The Shema, which is Hebrew for here. With all your heart, strength, mind, Hang on, soul, no, no, and you're, love you're, your neighbour as yourself. These one. two are the greatest. Wrong That's answer. That's what he said, it's not the right let, answer. Let me, let me give you an answer. I'm paraphrasing in Please, London. Excuse me. No, you You're did excused. ask the question. Did I did it right. You do it. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. It's a rhetorical question. Uh -huh. my, my bad. My bad. It's a rhetorical question. He said, "Hear, O Israel, it's the Lord our God is one Lord." He quoted the Shema. "Hear, O Israel, the Lord, and you shall love Him with all your heart." But before the love bit, "Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord." This is Tawhid. So the top the commandment according to Jesus, the top commandment according to the Quran, is the same commandment. Isn't that interesting? It's not a new revelation of the Quran, it's the same. So what's the second most important commandment according to the Quran? We'll, we'll go through this. What's the second most important well, commandment? According to the Quran, enlighten me. Huh? Enlighten me. Oh, really? Ah, oh, have you read the Quran? <laughs> no. Um, it's that we must not associate partners or intermediaries oh, sure, yes. with, with uh, God. If you look at the earliest historical data we have, Matthew, Mark, Luke, Q, M and L, to get academic for a second, Jesus is portrayed as someone who preaches, proclaims God, not himself, he proclaims God and his kingdom that, that, that is to come. If we look at the later Christian religion, the proclaimer has become the proclaimed. The proclaimer has become the one who is proclaimed. There's been an inversion of the religion of Jesus. What does the Quran do? It says, proclaim God and acknowledge and listen to his messengers. This is pretty much like what Jesus was about in the earliest historical records we have. So on these two top things, the Quran, the, 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 the Tawheed and the Shirk issue, which you, in Arabic you're right, Jesus and the Quran are in agreement. Everything else is secondary to that. And I think that's a really great foundation for religion. What has Christianity done? It associates partners with, with God. And it says, I worship God the Father and worship Jesus. But Jesus didn't say worship me, he said worship God. So you, you, you've lost Tawheed and you've committed shirk. So Islam is not a new religion, it's an old religion being uh, spruced up, cleansed of its corruptions and saying, look, this is what you should believe, the religion of Abraham. That's what it's Quran says. Love you, Follow the religion of Abraham. So I would say that I would say that Muhammad definitely did change the, uh, the prior revelation because you have the you disciples. An um, let's, yeah, let's bear in, I will give you an example, yeah. So let's bear this in mind. You have the eyewitnesses, the Matthew, Matthew uh, John, etc. Eyewitnesses. Matthew John, yes. Wow. So John claims to be an eyewitness in the very end of in the very end chapter. Chap, chap 21, John claims to be an eyewitness. So it doesn't, let, men, doesn't mention John. Let me carry on. So you have these eyewitnesses, these people who saw Jesus, John chapter 19, you have four witnesses there at the cross, you see him on the cross. You then have these people, you then have Muhammad come along six or six hundred or so years after, saying none of none of this ever happened. If let's if let's say this is gonna cause so, no, what happened, I missed the You have Muhammad come along six hundred years after denying what happened. Denying that the crucifixion happened. They oh, neither right. killed him nor crucified him, yeah, yeah. yes. So you have that. So they definitely he definitely did change the message that your witnesses, who claim to be our witnesses, said they saw. Yeah. But also Muhammad I mean, you believe there's a messenger in the line of prophets like Moses, etc. He actually did contradict Moses. For example, uh, in, in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 1, it says you should not have any sacred stones. In, in, we know in the Kaaba you have a sacred stone in one of the hadiths it says that Muhammad kissed this stone and one of the one of his companions said unless I saw Muhammad if I didn't see Muhammad doing this I wouldn't do it because I know it's just a stone I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know it's just a stone etc etc so here you see Islam you have you have a sacred stone as such you have uh, Muhammad kissing the stone but Moses said you shan't have any sacred stones so I would say that it did change the message slightly there definitely okay well firstly uh, I will just address that part yeah, I'll address it in the order that he mentioned it. Can you address the eyewitnesses first? Yes. All right, then. Is, is that all right? Yes, it's fine. With your permission, I will address this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, very kind of you. Um, I don't know any scholar who thinks... By scholar, I mean historians, properly accredited historians at major universities in the West. I don't know anyone who thinks the four Gospels are written by eyewitnesses. I mean, no one does. And, and there, there, are, there, there are good reasons for this. This debate has been had 200 years ago. You're a bit the times when it comes to scholarship of Who was alive at the time? I was. I remember in, in 1783 when I was a mere 18 year old. <laughs> Hello. 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 Be nice. I'm old enough to know better than answering that question. Exactly. Yes. Pots and kettles. Asking ladies their ages. 
but then assuming gender. So. Oh, of course, you're actually a, a male teenager. Well, no, I'm just a product of this society, unfortunately. Anyway, so, sorry, just a bit. Um, very quickly, let's take the first gospel. Matthew, it doesn't claim to be eyewitness, it doesn't say it's written by Matthew. Uh, it's written in the, in the third person, so he talks about. Um, uh, it's not written in the first person. I saw Jesus do that. It's written in the third person. Um, so uh, there's not even an internal evidence that, that Matthew wrote it. The earliest claim that it was written by Matthew, as you mentioned, is Irenaeus. But he was writing towards 100, 180, 190 AD, long, long after. When the Gospel is quoted by earlier writers like Justin Martyr and Ignatius of Antioch, uh, it's never quoted as from the Gospel of Matthew. It's just they're just just sayings, which may not even been put in the Gospel at that time. Uh, Luke doesn't claim to be an eyewitness. He says he relies on other people. Mark doesn't claim to be an eyewitness uh, either. Um, and Matthew and Luke use Mark in the writing of the own Gospel. By the way, we now know this. We can see that, which is a bit odd if you're an eyewitness. Why would you use someone else's work? Okay. Uh, John's Gospel doesn't actually name John or Johann or anything like that in the Gospel. It talks about the disciples Jesus loved. It doesn't name him. We have no idea who this dude was. We don't know his name, address, telephone well, we number. Leave, we can at least we don't know his email address. We don't know his WhatsApp. Nothing. We can at least say that. Do they have we've got the WhatsApp. We've got the WhatsApp. Well, but okay. By him saying this is the disciple who wrote the, who testifies these things, and we know yep. his testimony is true. By saying that, whether it's John or not, we can at least say yes, he's a disciple. And then we go to the external writings to show that this is in fact John. Uh, there are no external writings in the first century that it's by John. Irenaeus says it. Yeah, but you see, Irenaeus. Do you, I mean, do you know that? Do you know Irenaeus' biography? Do you know who this guy was? Irenaeus lived in <laughs> Lyon, uh, what we now call Lyon, in in France. Yeah, we wasn't. Well, there wasn't. France didn't exist then. Part of the Roman Empire. Um, and. Uh, he, yeah, he lived in Lyon in France. He, he didn't hang around Judea. He didn't know these guys. He, he, he lived a thousand miles. No, hang on. He, 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 didn't, he didn't know the apostles. Uh, he didn't know Matthew because he lived in a different century. He lived towards the end of the second century. Yeah, he knew Polycarp. And Poly uh, and and Polycarp was his mentor. John was Polycarp's mentor. This is all very, very... Um, Chain of narration almost. Yeah. Did you see yeah. what's wrong? Yeah. It's not, it's not a strong argument. Yeah, but what we have here, we have, we have somebody who's a disciple of John who taught Irenaeus, and that's the closest you can possibly get. But even though we have that, you're still saying, no, that can't be right. Who wrote the Quran, by the way? Yeah, that's a good question. Who wrote the Quran? Because we don't know the guy's name, the WhatsApp, the uh, Instagram page. We just don't know who wrote it. We've got scraps <laughs> of bone, <laughs> animal skins. We've I got like Uthman. We've got Uthman. Rhetoric, so was it Uthman? By the way, that was actually trademarked. You can't quote you about my permission. Shucks. So Do I, I have I your permission, sir? I, no, I Is expect royal playing I field. Are women deficient? Are. That kind of thing. Well, in some cases, yes. So <laughs> did you know when, when, um, when these names were scrapped? The I, I, I didn't mean you, by the way. <laughs> Because uh, you're assuming gender uh, if you do. Uh, I've got you. Well, indeed, uh, I know you're uh, actually a black teenage man. With one not leg. A white with one woman. leg. Yep. Um, because, hey, could be. Um, <laughs> so <I'm looking> at, <laughs> let me get back to the point. Um, no, if you look at the first century, that, that Matthew, Matthew itself doesn't claim to be eyewitness. It's in third person. The other reason is the disciples, sorry to be rude, but this is a technical term, Bob? were peasants. No, not they, they were fishermen. These yeah, guys didn't go to university and get degrees no, or anything. Well, there was no education. They couldn't read. Right. Uh, hang on, Matthew, Mark, Mark and Luke and John are written in I've very good Greek. Not the language the that they would have spoken. They certainly wouldn't have written it because they couldn't read and write because they were peasants, they were fishermen. So the whole thing suggests, a, what, what the consensus of historians is, that they are second generation uh, Christians, Gentile Christians, with the exception of person Matthew, who's probably a Jewish Christian, uh, but not the original disciples. No one, to my knowledge, believes they were written by, even evangelicals who are scholars don't believe that. So, so your argument in that sense falls, uh, in my view, there's no, no, no evidence for it. Oh, um, can I have a at one point? You say that they're peasants, there is an iterate, can't read or can't write. It's kind of a judgmental, isn't it? Yeah. But I mean that in a... In no, let, the, let me speak. But let's, let's just bear this... True. Let's just bear this in mind. The Gospels, as we know, were written some years after. Yeah? And illiteracy is, in fact, a curable disease. If they want to pen this down at some point later, they can very well learn to read and write in that time span. Of course they could, yeah, no issue. And we know that Luke... They went to school, didn't they? We know that Luke... For example, Luke's Gospel is a high Greek, as you say. Also, we can see from Luke's... Um, Luke is called a physician in, in other parts of the, of the New Testament. So, being a physician, he would have been well educated. So, to say, to say none of them could read or write, I don't think that's correct. Maybe they used someone to write down for them. Luke was not a disciple And this is a valid point. I mean, for example... Luke was not a disciple. You're mixing up. No, but you bear in mind... No, I'm not. But you bear in mind, Luke said that he, he took it... He, uh, 
Chicken to a cat, all the eyewitness accounts. But Peter, as, as the gentleman rightly said, um, but Peter, as, as, as we've seen oh, yeah. in Peter's one, Fred. As, as, as we see in chapter five of um, I think it was one or two Peter, Peter says that he uh, he makes the claim that Sylvanus finished uh, wrote his letter for him in, in, in a sense. So there's no issue there with, for example, Peter using Sylvanus to write for him, and in no way is I mean, for example, we know Mark wrote for Peter. So there's no issue there. If Peter can't write, Mark, Mark did for him. The issue is, illiterate uh, Galilean uh, peasants could not have written uh, a sophisticated bit of literature in Greek. Uh, they wouldn't have gone off to Galilee University to learn Greek. There were, do you know what percentage? Uh, yeah, you, 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 no, you don't. It's estimated the percentage of the people in the Roman Empire that could read and write, because they were separate things, was 2%. They were the absolute elite who could read and write. I do not believe Galilean fishermen suddenly became part of that 2% elite. It could dictate. Be it could but dictate. They, they, no, they but you see, signs and wonders. They did have the power of God with them also. No the Endure was uh, revealed by Allah, so you must believe that they had signs and wonders around them, that they had the power of the Holy Spirit or whatever, you know, the power of the Father. Yeah, I'm over here, darling. Hi! But uh, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, many times, he calls them, oh, you're dull. That mean even when he stopped with he them and in Arab, he asked, he tells them. Can you give us a chapter and verse? Understand your word. Don't. Give us a chapter and verse. Give us a chapter and verse. No, Jesus himself yes. talked to his disciples and he calls them dull. dull. That yeah, I've dull. The that Bible. they don't get the parable. The parable. No comment. Chapter and verse. Please, I don't know. So. The, 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 uh, the evidence suggests to virtual historians in the world, including biblical scholars who are Christian, that, that uh, the, the, four, the four Gospels are not written by eyewitnesses because there's no evidence that they were. And that this, this matters. John, um, as virtue or the scholars have really said, regard, because of the problems in understanding why Jesus, if he'd gone around making these amazing statements about himself, I am this, I am that, uh, in public, why would no other historical source in the first century know about this? Uh, and and the, the argument is that Luke, uh, sorry, John, because he believes Jesus is the light of the world, he puts those words in Jesus' mouth. So if we just change the pronoun, you know, he could almost say, you are the light of the world. That's what John is trying to say. Now, okay, so there are accounts of uh, contemporary accounts of satirists making fun of Christians shortly after the resurrection by saying, uh, you know, uh, satirists. Uh, dramatists. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll try and find them, but if I can say it first and then try and find them, because I've read it. So, of, of making fun of people because they thought they saw a, a dead man risen, etc. So, those would be extra scriptural. They, those would be historical. Um, well, even if it was early second century, it would still be a matter of a hundred years. Okay, well, that is that time to me, but I will find out. People made Mickey out of Why would people be willing to be tortured and killed for something that they secretly knew wasn't true. What, what, was, what was it they knew was secretly true? So, no, no, no. They publicly declared that Christ had risen, that he was the living God. But, so, for example, Watergate. Those people couldn't keep a lie for a couple of years under questioning. But these disciples could keep this truth going let me, let me, let me at, at the point of the, 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 this, the, this apparently is a good point. So all, all these early Christians, I said apparently, it's so apparent to the, the clue lies in the word apparently. I got it. I, I'm about to go in and... Um, it's apparently a good point uh, that the early Christians, hey, they, they, they proclaimed Jesus' resurrection, death and resurrection, and they were killed, and why would they die as martyrs for something they didn't believe in? Yeah, well, that's a good argument. Well, it isn't, unfortunately. There's a, a, a book... I can uh, tell you're devastated. I, I am go, 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 go. inwardly go, go. weeping, go, go. inwardly go, go. weeping. I just the can't help myself. Uh, there's a recent book out by uh, an eminent uh, historian of the early church, Christine Moss, who's a professor uh, in the States, um, and she made advance of the argument saying there's actually no evidence at all that the earliest disciples in the first century were martyred at all. What about Stephen? He was looking for that verse and disappeared. Well, yeah, okay, well, maybe he's got to look for it over there. <laughs> the verse is over there. Um, 
Stephen was not one of Jesus' disciples, first of all, right. was he? He was not one of the no, twelve. he was the first so, so, martyr. And, and, yes, he was. But the reason given, what was the reason given in the, in the book of Acts for Steve, Stephen's own martyr? Thank you. Uh, Dissent, like the disagreement with the council that uh, tried to. Okay, there's a long rambling speech that reports to be uh, Stephen uh, attacking the Sanhedrin. And he gets more, towards it, he gets more and more abusive. And he, he, he accuses them of this, and he accuses them of that. Uh, and he says you're stiff necks and you're this and you're that. And, and he pisses them off to such an extent that they basically get some trouble in that way. He's not being executed because the Pharisees, uh, as, the, as the council made clear, the Pharisees also believe in the resurrection of the dead. Believe, believe in the resurrection of the dead is yeah, not as opposed to the Sadducees who it's not, did it. It's not an un-Jewish thing. You can yep. believe that and be a good Orthodox Jew. There's nothing wrong in believing that. So uh, uh, Stephen wasn't uh, executed for saying Jesus rose from the dead. He was executed for being abusive. We can read it all in Acts. So that, that's, that example doesn't work either. There's no historical evidence that any of Jesus' disciples were killed or were executed for saying that Jesus rose from the dead. There is a later Christian myth, which I hear all the time at Spinks Corner and elsewhere. You're the only person decrying them as a myth. You say, you say, uh, no, no, sorry, that's because I'm the only one who's read the evidence. Me for a you, you say, yeah. Stephen, <laughs> the evidence of one American. Is this your problem? Yes, it is, yeah. I was, I was yeah. about to. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Yeah. 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 You say, um, it's just tricky. You say Stephen was put to death for insulting him, not for his belief in Jesus. Well, Jesus resurrection from the dead. Well, this, this is what he says here. Yeah. Uh, verse 55 in chapter 7. But being full of the Holy Spirit, he gazed intently into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and then they went on to kill him. So before he died, right before he died, he said he saw Jesus in heaven. And then they killed him for that, not for the insult. They only kicked off after he saw Jesus in heaven. Just that very passage. So what, did he, what did he see in heaven? The Son of Man standing at the right hand of the Father. No, you just... You just uh, with, with, with respect, can you read it again? <laughs> Don't listen to this man. I am. I am try not to. No. Can you read again what you just told me? Because you have done the classic Christian double switch what? twisting. What did, you what, he what did he see when he saw into heaven? And behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Ah, that's not what you said. What you said. said no, no. Yeah, you said. said standing next to. No, 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 let me tell you what you said. Because he picked it up. Uh, George here picked it up. I've read exactly what you said. No, you didn't. Did he? No, he didn't. I'll tell you what you said. It's a learning point because this is what unfortunately Christians say. They do it so unconsciously they don't know they're doing it. But, but George, but George, I, I heard you read it the first time. Let's him noticed it. I noticed it. You said that Jesus was standing next to the Father, standing at the right hand of God. That's no, what no, no. I said I, I may have said afterwards he was standing at the right hand. Father. I may have said when I read, read it. When I read that, when I read that, when I read that, I said that. But after I finished reading, I explained what it means. You change God to Father. So, 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 so let's not get stuck on that no, point. What's the 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 being full of the Holy Spirit, he gazed intently into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And behold, I saw the heavens open and the Son of Man at the right hand of God. Then they killed, they didn't kill him because he was slagging them off. They, 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 they killed him because, well, they killed him immediately after he gazed into heaven and saw, and, and, and saw Jesus. I was in the middle of saying something, by the way. So the point is, I was interrupting while you were speaking. Let me say you were. <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. He interrupted when I was speaking. Um, hey. He saw, open, Stephen saw God back, open, open, and back, Jesus and the Son of Man next to God. Here we have God and we have Jesus as two separate beings. They're not the same. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, the, the point yeah, is, it's interesting, isn't it? He didn't see the Trinity. He didn't see Father, Son and Holy Spirit. He saw God and next to God he saw the Son of Man, which is Jesus. He says he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then he saw God, uh, God the Son. Sorry? Yeah, 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 so all the Christians are filled with the Holy Spirit. All the Christians in the New Testament are filled with the Holy Spirit. They don't make you God. Who does the Son? But they're not all martyred for it. Go on, go on, go on. Anyway, go on, go on. just to continue yeah. what I'm saying. So here's an interesting argument actually against the Trinity, because he didn't see the Trinity, he saw God and Jesus separately. You're disputing that Jesus gives eternal life. Is that the bottom line? No, it's not. I'm 
talking about this person. But that's what our so question was earlier. Well, that was about like three years ago. Exactly. Or four years ago. And it still hasn't ago. come to fruition in you. <laughs> you still haven't given... Anyway, about that coming back to... Look, that was just a footnote in parenthesis, because I actually wanted to deal with the issue here, is that the actual cause of uh, Stephen's death is not because he proclaimed the resurrection of Jesus, which is your... Who, who because it's me. Your, but because it's biblical. Because so the, the, the rest of them, you're saying... It's, sorry, you're saying they're not historically accurate based on an American woman, if I've got it right. Christian Moss, somebody like that. You're saying there's no historical evidence for martyrdom, and I just pointed to Stephen because it's biblical as well. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not martyrdom that's the issue here. Of course Stephen was it martyred. Is, it's whether they would die for it, a lie. It was, you have read me a quote yet where it says that... Stephen was uh, stoned to death when he believed that Jesus rose dead from well, the dead. That, that, that's that not was, what you that quoted. That wasn't my point. My no, that was my no, point. No, no, that was her no, point. No, so can you address her point? point. Your no, point no. no, your point was that uh, Stephen was stoned to death because he was really slagging off the, uh, the, 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 the Jews. What was the reason? But then I, I read it to you. He was, he was only killed and they only started to kick off after he claimed to see Jesus. Because bearing in mind the context of it... So what was the reason, second, what was the reason he was getting <coughs> murdered? The context of it is that this is after the after the resurrection, I know the one second, I know the it was after the resurrection where they wanted to squash the Christian movement, but they could not have anyone teach about Jesus. They even told Peter, "Stop teaching about Jesus." And then he was killed because he said he saw Jesus, not because he was slagging them off. So the claim that the that people were executed for believing that Jesus rose from the dead has not been substantiated. Oh, how about for believing that he's God? Has it? How about John? How about John in prison? Because that passage just doesn't say that were ex the people executed him because he believed Jesus rose from the dead, does it? No, no, sorry? He wasn't well, no, Jesus but no, was just a prophet and no, then no, they no, all but just no, but no, yeah, the, the implication is there clearly. They're saying they know that everyone, but they know that everyone in the church in Jerusalem is saying that Jesus rose again. So the second he says, "I've seen Jesus," then they kill him. They can't have Christians. They wanted to squash the movement. Now, believing that Jesus rose from the Shows dead that Jesus was still not alive. the reason that Jesus. Sorry, the idea that the Messiah, that a man, a Jewish man, had died and rose from the dead was not un-Jewish, anti-Jewish, or heretical, because the Pharisees believed that as well. That, you, that there will be a resurrection of the dead. That is not something. Killing someone. But not by the power of the Holy Spirit or the Father or He lays His own. Tell me when. Action. Action. Uh, ready? Yep. yep. Okay. Action. So you asked for a verse to show where people are being persecuted for their faith in the resurrection of Christ. Let's read chapter 4. As they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to them, being greatly disturbed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in, the, in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in jail. believing in Jesus' resurrection. Wrong, wrong. Let me tell you why you're wrong. No, you're wrong. Let me tell you why you misunderstood that passage. Ah, okay. So even though that's what it says, I'm still wrong. No, because how you interpret it, you misunderstood it. I didn't I didn't interpret you it, did. I just read it. You did. And you all the said, you, 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 no, let me explain why, let me explain why. You are, you are aware, I'm sure, that there was a big bust up between different Jews, between the Sadducees and... So they were Sadducees? I can, I can, I can expect to speak, speak for myself, thank you so much. There was a big bust up between the Sadducees and who, controlled, who controlled the temple. Who controlled the temple, by the way. The Sadducees controlled the temple and the Pharisees who didn't. They were kind of the holy men who, amongst the people, to be very simplistic, who most certainly did believe in uh, the resurrection. What we have here are the Sadducees suppressing heresy, as they understood it, which was shared by the Pharisees about the resurrection of the dead. It was not the belief specifically that Jesus has risen from the dead. It was any belief that the that any uh, that any um the resurrection of the dead per se, that's what the passage says. They were preaching the resurrection of the dead, like the Pharisees were, the Sadducees attempting to suppress heresy. I think that's what's going on in that passage. No, I think I mean, it's clear to see. Why was they proclaiming the resurrection of the dead? Because Jesus resurrected from the dead. Yes, they, they so, that. So, 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 so your point where they were saying the resurrection of the dead. One second. So your, yeah, I agree, there was. The Sadducees didn't, didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead, the Pharisees did. But the point is, you asked, is there any passage in the Bible, or the New Testament, where the, the, uh, the 
disciples, I can't hear myself think, where the disciples were persecuted for the resurrection. I showed you there, those arrested for preaching about the resurrection. But what you've not shown... No, no, but you're, you're, you're coming with this interpretation. I'm simply reading what's there. I've been singled out, by the way. We don't tell half They simply said they, they, they've been persecuted there for the resurrection. You're saying, sorry, Paul, you're saying, but that's not what it means. I'm not interpreting it. I'm just reading it. You're all due respect to what Interpreting, about your interpreting your law, interpreting your law, your law. Uh, no, you're still wrong because, with you don't want it to be known. because my point uh, remains unchanged. Uh, it's the martyrdom, the martyrdom is not persecution, the actual killing of Christian the early Christians. Uh, they weren't killed for claiming that Jesus rose from the dead. I never denied Acts where it says people were persecuted, Peter was put in prison. I never denied that, but I, I have uh, denied that the um, oh. deceiver. Attacking me. Um, these people were not. You can finish if you like. Paul was not executed, for example, because of the resurrection. As far as we know, Peter wasn't either, or the disciples. I've never denied they were, that they were yeah, persecuted. Uh, I've never denied that. So you, this is a different subject. The New Testament does not bear witness to any Christians being killed for their belief uh, in Acts and uh, uh, for their belief in Jesus. Why would no, I? Do that? It, it, they, they were persecuted. So I even, so never denied they were persecuted. So even though, even though I've shown you where those imprisoned for yeah. preaching about the resurrection, Stephen was, that. Stephen, Stephen, that. Stephen was then killed for believing in Jesus. No, he wasn't. Oh, no, 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 so his resurrection. So, so okay. So you're saying that although Stephen was alive at the same time as Peter and all of this, and those in Jerusalem hearing the same message being preached, you're saying they came to two very different conclusions. No, I'm saying. No, I'll repeat it again. I'm not denying people were persecuted. I've never said that. It's a complete straw man, red herring. I'm only saying, as the scholar says, that the, the, the stories of uh, the early disciples being killed for believing in Jesus' resurrection from the dead are not historical, even in the Bible or in wider literature. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying no one, I'm not saying everyone sat at home and had tea and everything was fine. I've never argued that. Well, they went around the streets and everyone said, well, roses at them. I'm saying they, 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 weren't, they, ex they weren't executed. <laughs> Thanks for the conversation. Do appreciate that. Where do I wrap up? Uh, so do or not? <laughs> okay, wrap up. We'll give you the floor to do a wrap up, Paul. Hey, nice to talk to you. He wants to wrap up. Okay, do you want to wrap up? No? Okay. So, go are loco. They're a bunch of loonies who run this channel, so. That's a nice wrap up. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. So, Paul made a number of claims that the uh, Christians were not persecuted for the resurrection. We showed him in Acts chapter 4 where Peter was, in fact, imprisoned for preaching about the resurrection. We showed him where. Uh, uh, Stephen in chapter 7 was killed for believing in the resurrection. He mentioned earlier Jesus prays like a Muslim. He shows him where Jesus says that if you pray in my name, I will do it. He also says um, that God is his father and that he is God's son. No Muslim can pray like this. So all the, uh, the claims that Paul made are simply false and they have no foundation. And Paul also mentioned, he said, we don't know who wrote the Gospel of John. But if we actually look at the Gospel of John, we see some internal evidence in chapter 21 where we see that this is in fact a disciple. It's towards the end of John's Gospel in chapter 21, it says, and this is the disciple who wrote these things down and we know his testimony is true. Why do we know his testimony is true? Because he was in fact an eyewitness. The external evidence we have in the writings of Saint Irenaeus, where in his writings he says, John wrote the Gospel of John, that John wrote the fourth Gospel. It's important to know who Irenaeus was, because Irenaeus was a disciple of Polycarp, and Polycarp was in fact a disciple of John. So there we have a very early individual who says that John wrote John, and he was taught by the man who was taught by John. And also, uh, my friend Kay mentions that um, after Paul's claims, who wrote the Gospel, who wrote this, Kay then rightly said, well who wrote the Quran? To which Paul had no answer, he just got stuck. And um, this is the inconsistency of Paul's argument. Thank you, thank you very much.